Have you ever looked around and felt that everyone solves Sudoku faster than you? All the video comments show ridiculously fast solve times that you could never hope to beat. If so, you're not alone. It's a pretty common feeling. In this video, I'll show you two of the top tricks that the experts use to solve hard Sudoku faster than you and how you can use sound logic to beat them at their own game. And with that, it's solving time. Let's get an easy solve out of the way. You might notice this four cuts across row three and this four comes up column one. It leaves a four in just these two spots here in block one. Since they're in the same row, a four can't be anywhere else along that row. Combine it with this four and a four in row three, the only place to put a four now in block three is right there. Greetings, friend. This puzzle from round six of the 2025 Sudoku Grand Prix was rated the hardest of the classic Sudokus. And you may wonder how the experts can solve it in five minutes or less, because you're going to get to a spot where you'll get hard stuck. But I'll show you two of the biggest Sudoku shortcuts they use to get those fast solve types. Then I'm going to equip you with the strategies you can use to solve this in any hard Sudoku better than the so-called experts. To get to where you need to see the first trick, you look for digit restrictions from one to nine. So if you look at the ones, you see what the ones in rows two and three, only two places for a one in block two. So anytime in a three by three block, two possibilities for a candidate mark it. This is a called a one step restriction. If you solve one of these cells for other than a one, you can solve the other one for a one very quickly. But these ones, only two places for a one in block four. Nothing else you can do solving or marking the ones. Go to the twos with the twos in columns two and three. Only two places for a two in block four. Nothing else there. There's only one three and no restrictions that you can mark for now. With the fours, you might see now with this four and this four. Two places for a four in block four. And then with this four and these two fours, two places in block eight, in addition to the fours we already marked. And move on to the fives. Nothing we can do with the fives. You might notice three places for a five here. I don't mark that because I want to look for those one step restrictions. If you mark three fives and you eliminate one of these, you still got two to go. I don't want to reduce that clutter. All right, move on to the sixes. With all these sixes looking into block five, the only place left for a six is right there which restricts the sixes to these two cells in block two. Nothing else with the sixes. Look on the sevens, and you'll see that with these two sevens, two places for a seven in block five, and then with this seven and this seven, two places for a seven in block seven, and they act as a pointing pair since they're in the same row. If you go with this seven and the seven in column eight, only place left for seven block nine is right there, which now restricts the seven to these two cells in block six. Move on to the eights, and you'll see with these two eights, two places for an eight in block two, and then with these two eights, two places in block six, and with these two eights, two places in block seven. Nothing else with the eights. You look at the nines, and you have these two nines, three places here, not going to mark that, nothing else. And so at this point, you go back through and look at heavy houses. I'm going to tell you what, nothing's going to really pop out at you. Uh, and so the best you could do, you know, is mark where you have a heavy house of so five or more cells filled out, which is right here in row one, which gives you, you know, a two, four, seven, eight, nine, you'd have a one, three, five, six, and you can put a one right there. You can remove the six and the three here, and you can remove the three and five there, create some bye-bye cells, which is helpful in a way, but not much. And then the other place where you have at least five cells filled out is row eight. So you got a one, two, four, six, seven, you'd have a three, five, eight, and nine. This can't be an eight. 
this can't be a three or a five and this can't be a nine and that is about it and you're not going to see much else here and so this is where the experts are going to use their first trick before i get to that i got the question of the day for you what did you do at this point in the puzzle please 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 share in the comments and help me grow the internet's best sudoku community did you give up did you try something did you find an advanced strategy i'd love to hear from you i read and answer every comment so after you fill out these heavy houses you notice with these buy buy cells that you can make a choice you go well you know this cell right here is it's either going to be a one or a six this could be a one or a five this is where the experts would go if they cannot find a pair or a triple or some easier strategy like you can find in my free Sudoku solving guide. And so they do a thing that's called bifurcation. And the idea there is you're going to try one value and if it breaks the puzzle, gets to the point where you can't solve anymore uh, without causing a contradiction, then you know you can pick the other value for that cell and move on and so in this cell right here the reason they picked this i think is because you want to see you notice how these sixes they have a lot of impact on this puzzle in particular a lot of restriction here in column one because of this six and the six here and also in column eight because of this six and of course the six in the row so where could the sixes be in this puzzle? If you marked all the spots a six could be, you'd mark these cells here. Now I'm going to keep marking and remove these sixes. Now, what an expert would notice is they look right here and they go, you know what, if I put a six right here, what would happen very quickly is all these cells, and I'll mark the six to show you, all these cells would not be a six anymore. And then you'd notice, they would notice, okay, in column one and eight, the only place to put a six would be in row nine. Here and here, I'm gonna put that in red. Well, you can't have a six in two places. So you can't have it in column one right here and then column eight right there, you'd break the puzzle. So they'd go, hey, a six can't be in this spot. And so they'd solve for one and move on with the puzzle. If they see that, using this type of logic, they would move on. Well, that's not the best way to solve. In fact, is there a strategy here that is creating the same situation that you could use for any hard puzzle? And once you see it, you'd know you could solve it. Yes. So the first piece of logic I'm going to show you here is notice in column one, in column eight, there's a conjugate pair of sixes. What that means is the sixes can only appear twice. Either this is a six, if it's not a six, that would have to be a six. Same thing here. Either this is a six, if it's not a six, that has to be a six. Powerful relationship between these two. It's called a strong link, and they create a conjugate pair. Well, you'll notice that the sixes are limited to the same two rows in columns one and eight. So then a six would have to be here and here, right? Because it would eliminate these spots. Or if a six isn't there because of the conjugate pairs, it has to be here and here. You notice how I'm making kind of this X shape? That's because this is a Sudoku X wing that you would find. And what it means is you can eliminate a six from any cell in rows one and nine that are not in the orange. So right here, here, and here, you can eliminate a six. For the reasons I showed you earlier, it would create a contradiction if you didn't put it in one of the orange cells. And a way to mark that we eliminated sixes from those cells is to mark where the two places are remaining. And then you can remove the six from right there. So you could find an actual X-wing. This is sound logic, and you'll see it time and again in these hard puzzles. And so by doing that, you know with certainty, you didn't guess, you know for sure that you cannot have a six here. You can eliminate the six and solve this now for a one. Okay, and after doing that, what you want to do is look at the impact row, column, block until you get to the second spot where you get stuck and the experts would have to use another trick. So, what would happen here is we can remove these colors 
And since you displace that one, that six up here, you know you can solve this cell for six right away, which displaces that eight marking. And with this one, you know you can solve this now for a five. It leaves a two nine right there. But you're not done, right? Because now you can remove the fives from these cells because you put a five in row one. And after doing that, you're going to again look more at the impact row, column, and block. Because of the five here and the five there, you now have a pointing pair of fives here, and you continue on with your solving and limit the fives here in block seven. And then you'd probably get stuck again. And so where would you look? And this is going to be hard to see. You have to look across row six. So the experts might do another bifurcation to get through this. But you can defeat this with sound logic. What you'll notice is that the twos are limited to rows four and five here in block four. Well, now with this two nine coming down that you just created, the twos are limited to rows four and five here in block five as well. You're not marking it because there's four possibilities, but it tells you something, right? With these twos coming, two can't be there, can't be here. You need the two somewhere in row six. Where would it go? Well, it has to be in block six in row six, right? Because we already showed a two can't be here, here, or here. And since it could be in one of these two possibilities, you'd find a claiming pair. This is the other trick you have to find. And this is sound logic. A claiming pair means that since the two has to be somewhere in the row, it claims that row for this block. And so now you can eliminate twos from all these other areas. And to do that, if you found that, you'd be able to make the next solve. Because then you could see where can a two go in column eight. Well, it can't be here or here anymore because the twos are there. Can't be here can't be there. The only le place left for a 2 is right there. And so when you make that solve, now you can make and look at the impact on row, column, and block. You're not done yet. There's still plenty of solving to go on here, so you need to follow these marks that you made. That 2 displaces this 6, which can displace this 6. And what you notice is that 6 displaces that 5, is this 2 is in one of the spots of the X-wing. Right? And by doing that, you force a 6 here and here. It has to be there and there, right? Because there's no other place to put a 6 in this column. So put your 3 right there. That's the kind of impact you want to see. And there's a 3 in the corner for you. Dun, dun, dun. Which gives you now a 2, 9 right there as the only possibilities. Okay, where else can we go with this solving? Well, this 6 and this 6. You saw this cell for a six, displacing that five, that four, displacing that five, leaving just a nine right there. And now you can disambiguate the nine and two right here. And you just want to clean up as many of these marks as possible. This four means this can't be a four anymore. Displace the four. You saw that for four, displacing that one. See how that works? And then now with this four and these fours, two places for a four right there. Just make those marks. With the 2, 9 here and the 1, 4, 6, 8 here, this has to be a 3, 7 now. But can we do better than that? I bet we can. If you look across this row, you got a 1, 4, 5, 6, 8. You need a 2, 3, 7, 9. Well, now you got the 2, 7, 9 right here. This can only be a 3 now. And so you can quickly solve this for 7 and solve that for a 3. This place in this 7, solve this for a 7. This is why you make those marks. You see how quickly now you can make these solves? Solve that for a 4. Displacing this 4, solve for a 4 right there. Awesome. And now this 7 means you can displace this 7. Solve this cell for a 7. You have a full house. 8 of 9 cells filled out. You know you can solve this for a certainty for a 3. And then what you have left here is an 8 and a 9. Well, with this 9, that has to be your 9 displacing that 8. And you want to move on with the solves here. So what you can look at is notice that with these fives, you got two fives right there. Okay. And then with this five, the fives can't be here anymore. And so it gives you, and then with this eight, this can't be an eight anymore. And so you notice the nines are restricted here. Okay. Can we do better 
than that. Yep, because you got a 358 going right here. Three and a five are right there. That's got to be your eight. And so now you can solve this for the three. That's the nine. That's the eight. And just kind of follow those marks as you keep making more solves. And you notice that the five isn't represented yet. So you know this has to be your five in that column. And then what can we do? Well, you can remove that as a possibility for the eight. And then we're going to move on with some more solves here. I like looking at where the greatest restrictions are. You only have left here a 1 and a 5 in column 6. And so knowing that that's going to be a 1 or a 5 means this has to be a 2 or a 3. Well, with the 2 right there, there's your 2, there's your 3. Now, something, a neat little trick here when solving this, you notice that this is a 1, 5, or an 8 remaining in block 9. This can't be an 8 because of the 8 in a row. This situation right here, this is a unique rectangle. Two columns, two blocks, two rows, one five in every spot except right here. I can tell you with certainty this cell is an eight because the puzzle has a unique solution. This is, will avoid a deadly pattern. But if you don't believe me, let's keep on solving and see what happens. You'll notice in row six, you got a two and a nine right there with this nine. That has to be the nine displacing that two, okay? And then with these twos and this two, you can solve this cell for a two. Complete the full house with a five right there. And now you'll see that that's a one, that's a five, that's a one. And with the five and the one here, guess what? That green cell is an eight. It sure is. So I called that for you. All right, let's remove that and let's finish our solves. You notice you got a full house here in column seven so you know you can solve that for certain i don't see a three so that's got to be your three and this is going to be your eight and then we can work right here and you need a one and a three in column nine so i see the three right there so there's a three there's a one follow the ones i want to place the one going block five is there now which gives you a two and a nine here so i'm going to find the first digit i can that's a two so there's a two there's your nine and now you can disambiguate a two there, and our last digit is a nine. Now, see if you can spot the X-Wing in this next competition puzzle. Thank you so much for watching.